from 20th Century in Portland. We're here for the title matches of today's JBT event. Good friends, but fierce competitors here, Brandon Myers and Nick Devlin. Brandon got the top seat over Nick by just one pin after eight games today on the challenging Badger Lane pattern. 52 feet of oil, no surprise to see Myers, the two-hander, is the top seed. Nick sort of imitating that same line with his thumb in the ball. The interesting thing to know is I talked to Brandon before we started and he changes his approach to four steps instead of five steps on the Badger. Huh, to slow down everything? Slow down everything. You see, uh, if you watch the Badger video from last week at Keystone, you see the same general thing. Really all he can do is play a fade back to the pocket and you see that ball even with all that rotation you miss just a little bit right and it doesn't come back enough to carry and then a mistake big mistake here is on a three bagger he misses that fairly easy two four and gives Devlin a little bit of hope Nick is clean through six without a double Myers still at a 215 pace so big two frames coming up here for Devlin the current champ in the Northwest he won our last event at Acme last month Looks way right as well. Well, two good looks at why Badger is so difficult right there. That wasn't more than a couple boards right, and it just never had a prayer of picking up. <laughs> and one, two, four is the result. Still plenty of time. Devlin can strike out for 226. First things first, you got to make the spares. All right, nice job with the spare there. Cut today was minus 112, so under a 180 average was enough to get you in the top half today. Brandon, again, your top seed at 173. He's also the leader after five at plus 117, so really solid day out of him. Nick's win at Acme was his first career JVT title, and Brandon, I forget if he has any handicap wins, but I know he doesn't have any scratch wins. I see them playing similar lines. A lot of hand rotation for the thumb in. That's perfect right there. He threw his best shots when he needed it in the second half of the game at Acme. He's going to have to do the same thing here. We have a third place winner joining us. Third place winner, Connor Jackley. What the heck happened out there in that semifinal game? No carry. No carry? Hot time. Oh dear. Sorry to hear that, Connor. That's all right. Good run, though. That one's left. Oh, and look at it fade. If you can, if you're going to miss on Badger when you got that maximum rotation like Brandon does, miss a little left and just watch it push in that soup all the way back. There's a lot of flat tens when you do that. But yeah. If you're high enough, you're all, you're too high. If that came in from the outside, you're leaving fours and four nines and maybe worse. But when you're coming from that fade, you want to be higher flush than you ordinarily would. If he was pocket from there, that's when you leave flat tens, five tens. All kinds of nightmares. Mm. You see that, that ball actually faced up a lot sooner. That was righter than the last ball. And on darn near 4 9 right there, lucky to only leave the 4. Puts his thumb back in the ball, goes hard and straight at the spares. I like that. Maybe he isn't this time. Yes, he is. So you have the Belmonte spare shooting where you keep your thumb out of it, and you have the Palermo spare shooting where you put your thumb back in it. He goes Oscarish, covers it up. You have the potential for a very dramatic finish here. As Myers goes strike spare for 215. Devlin, like we said, can max for 226. The next two, uh, next two nine spare would be 215 for himself. So anything can happen here. Yeah, this is the key one. Oh, he gets the light mixer. Tough to carry light hits on Badger. I did not think that. Once that ball gets right, it's tough for it to rotate enough to carry the light hit. He got it. He must have put some stuff on that ball. Must be an ball. That's right, baby. He has made. If he marks, he has made Myers mark. He strikes. Oh man, pretty darn good shot, like we were just talking about, not much difference between a flush strike and a half ten. He needs to get spare and nine to make Devlin mark, so even though that's a disappointing result, he still needs to focus on this spare. Alright, 
Nine gives Devlin 204. Nine miss for the Myers would be 203. So nine is as good as a strike here. He's taking a second to look at the scoreboard. That's a professional move. Oh, he's going for the re-rack. Which when you hit the re-rack on the which when you hit the re-rack on the actual machine triggers the score and infuriates the director. That's alright, Evan will fix it. <laughs> Right do you know how to do it, Evan? Evan to the rescue. He knows these Accu scores. These are the lane scoring machines I grew up on. I think they're easy when you've been doing them for 40 years, like me. Hey, we're at 20th century lanes. You know, I have 20th century machines. Beautiful 50 laner here in Portland. Thanks to all the crew here at AMF for hosting us. Always do a great job here, that's why we come here so often. Now, again, back to the seriousness, nine is as good as a strike here. You get no more shots after this, unless he gets eight. All right. I think the body language was, where was that last time? So he finishes up with that 205. Virtually any mark, and Brandon wins his first career stretch title any kind of open whatsoever, and Nick wins his second in a row. Here we go. Dead flush. What a breakthrough couple of months for Myers as he has been he, let, he finished second in the TPC two years ago, kind of had a get used to it season and scratch last year. Just a couple of weeks ago made the cut in a regional on Bear, which is essentially US Open. And here he breaks through for his first scratch JBT win today. What a great run Myers is on. That's a tailor-made pattern for him right here. We'll have to these two great bowlers and we'll do it all over again here from Portland tomorrow. Be here, folks.